This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the only one platform where you can create your own website. Ah, today's the day, we are finally doing it. Now, what are we doing, you might ask? Well, we're finally replacing this door, which I've been using as a tabletop for the last close to two years, with a really nice custom-built desk. As you can see, the setup here is far from optimal, and even though I have a fairly large desk, I can't use half of it because one side is full of stuff I never use, and the other side is full of a bunch of cables and chargers and stuff that is just in the way all the time. Like, these are all the chargers and card readers and batteries that I use for editing and shooting my videos, but right now, it's just this big, entangled mess of cables. Luckily, though, I have a plan to fix all of that, on one side of the desk, we're gonna have a couple of drawers so that I can fit all the stuff that is now just cluttered on one side. And on the other side here, I'm gonna have one big drawer custom built to have all of my chargers and batteries and all that stuff that is now on top of the table inside the dedicated drawer. So my plan is to have a really nice and clean desk with no visible cables. We're gonna build the whole thing out of ash. The top surface is gonna be linoleum, and I've even got a little surprise for you that we're gonna build in some electronics into the desk. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started building this thing. So like you saw in the last video, I've already got all the wood for this entire project right here. I've got a couple of different thicknesses of plywood, MDF, and even this really nice board made up of full length glued up ash boards. Now we've got to start somewhere. So why don't we start with the most complicated part, which is the tabletop. Now I've already made all the drawings for this entire project with all the bits and pieces that we're gonna to need to make to make this whole table come together. Now, I'm gonna go out of my way to make this a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, just because I don't want any other materials visible on the entire thing other than oak and the top surface material, which is gonna be black linoleum. So here's the part that is gonna make making the tabletop a little bit difficult. You might remember when I made this little guy here, which is my side table made out of 3D printed joints and ash. When I made this guy, I made the top surface with a really big chamfer in the front so that when you look at it from a little bit higher up, it looks like it's made up of a really thin slice of wood. I really like the way that looks and I wanna duplicate that in my desk. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make the core out of this sheet of 22 mil birch plywood, which is really stable. The top surface is gonna be that black linoleum and on the bottom, we're gonna have this four mil sheet of ash covered MDF. And then to get that nice big chamfer in the front that is all gonna be oak, I'm gonna cut a strip of this board, cut the chamfer on it, and then glue it to the front, kind of like edge bending, but with a big chamfer on it. The next step is to use a whole bunch of glue glue these two together, stack a whole bunch of heavy stuff on top of it, and then we'll have ourselves one thick sheet of plywood with MDF on one side. All right, that was one straight side cut on the board that we've just glued together. It's now time to cut some 45 degree angles, and we'll do that on the table saw. All right, so this is our tabletop with currently 45 degree edges on the front and on the sides. This whole piece is upside down, so this is the bottom. We now need to make what is gonna become the ash front and sides. We're gonna make that out of this thick ash board, so let's head back over to the tabletop. a little bit of slightly tricky table saw work. We've got ourselves a couple of strips of these kind of strange looking profiles that are gonna become the edge bending for the edge of this board here. And because of the 45 degree angle that we've got on here, combined with the 20 degree angle that we've got on the strip here, the overall angle which we're actually gonna end up with on the underside of this table is 65 degrees, which is a shallower angle than I would have been able to achieve with any other way at least in my shop. Now we just need to cut these pieces with a couple of weird angles on the corners so that they'll fit together just like this. And now all that's left to do is glue them on. 
All right, I've taped everything in place temporarily to make sure that everything will actually fit. Looks like it does, so I'll start with the front and then glue on the sides when the front is dry. So now that the glue is dry, we can start taking the tape off and then trim off all these bits to make sure they look nice. And while gluing the big front strip here in place with regular wood glue worked great, I actually had some troubles with the sides, which I ended up solving with super glue. <laughs> that seems to have worked really well. So for the little lip right here, this little tiny one, I'm just gonna use my small little hand plane and carefully try to plane this edge flat. All right. So I'm really pleased with the way this has made it up. Turns out the big one was way easier to deal with. Time to do the other side. All right, so for this side, I have quite a bit more to take off and I also think it would be a lot harder to get it flat. So I'm gonna use this cobbled together contraption, which is effectively just a router with a couple of wooden bits attached to it so that I can use this flat top surface and hopefully get the edge here flush with the top. Guys, for now, the top here is finished. And tell you what, I am super happy with the way this has turned out. We'll still have to glue the final top surface on here, but we'll do that after we made the two cabinets that will sit underneath it, which is exactly what we're gonna build now. So let's cut up some parts for that. Alright, so unless I forgot something, that should be all the parts for the rest of this desk. All this will make up a total of five drawers and the two cabinets which the drawers are gonna go into. Now we're gonna do something pretty cool with the cabinets, so let's start with those. I've got all the parts for both those cabinets right here. Now I've made them out of a mix of both MDF and plywood, just because that's what I had here. Regardless, I don't want any of those edges visible. Now normally, I would cover those up with some ash edge banding, which we're actually gonna do for a lot of the parts in the drawers in just a second, but that edge bending is really thin. And that is not gonna work for what I have planned for these cabinets. You see, I wanna cut a chamfer on the front of all of these cabinet parts so that all the fronts kind of have an angle going in towards the drawer fronts. See, in order to have enough material in the front that actually can cut that chamfer, I've cut a couple of these strips. I cut these strips out of that same ash board that I made the front edges of the tabletop out of. Just for this one, I cut it into thin strips and then I also trimmed off some of the thickness of these. So now the ash strips have the same exact thickness as our boards. Now it's just gonna be a matter of gluing these strips onto the front of all these parts, which we're gonna do with our biscuit joining machine. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna make one of these tables for yourself, I'll have the plans available to download from my website, which is alch.shop, which is also a perfect segue to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is a really great all-in-one platform that you can use to create your own website, just like I did when I created mine. So for basically as long as I've been making videos here on YouTube, I've had my own website, which I made using Squarespace. It was super simple to set up. You don't need to have any technical knowledge. You can just use any of their award-winning templates and you can start creating your own website right away. And as many of you probably know, I've been selling digital plans and 3D files for my projects on my website, and that was super easy to set up. Squarespace has really great tools to handle everything from shipping, inventory, analytics, and sales. There's no limit to how many products you can list on your website, and payment solutions are super simple to set up. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com A-L-C-H for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, 
So the glue on these is dry. It's now time to trim off the ends. We'll also cut the chamfer in the front and then we'll also cut a big 45 degree angle chamfer in all the corners because that's how we're gonna assemble those cabinets. So the cabinets are done. It's now time to start making the drawers that will go inside of those. I've got all the parts here, but before we can start assembling them, I want to make sure that none of these ugly MDF or plywood edges are visible. So just like we've done with the other drawers, we're going to apply some edge banding on the visible edges. Now, a whole bunch of edge bending later. We've got all our parts edge bended and ready to go. Now, all these pieces are ready to be assembled into five individual drawers. Now, you've probably already seen me make drawers a bunch of times in the past in my previous videos, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. These are gonna be the exact same as I already have in my work table, which means that they're gonna go together out of two side pieces into which I've cut a couple of slots on the table saw. And these slots are gonna fit onto the bottom plate, a front and a back piece. The drawers are glued up, which means that we're basically finished with all the main parts. That means that there's only one more thing left to do before we can start assembling all these parts, and that is to make some legs for our table. <laughs> and yes, I'm fully aware that I've been doing mostly woodwork on my metalworking layer lately, but hey, at least I'm using it. Oh, come on, so close. Don't tell me I don't use my lathe to do metalworking stuff. I just shorten this drill bit so I can fit this cabinet in underneath here. It's time to drill some holes so that I can fit these chubby little legs inside of those holes. Insert a leg. That's the short stubby legs taken care of for the big cabinet on the right side. Now on to the long legs for the cabinet on the left side. I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the base for my just my table. I'm gonna use my Bridgeport milling machine to cut a couple of flat spots in the round rods that we made on the lathe. Drill a couple of holes for some dowels and then assemble all that into the frame for these legs. Now that we've got these last pieces made, we can finally assemble the leg structure for the other cabinet. I've also made a couple of these cute little plugs, which I'm gonna use to plug up the holes from the screw holes here, so that we have no visible screws once everything is assembled. Alright, on to the fun part. 
So since I'm trying to make this desk be as clean as possible with no visible wires, it is very convenient that the newest iPhone just released a wireless charging mechanism, the MagSafe. So I figured how cool would it be if my desk had a built-in one of these so that I could just put my phone down and then it would automatically start charging. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna route a pocket in the top surface here that will fit this little magnetic charging puck. We'll glue this thing in and then once we cover it with that layer of linoleum, it will be completely invisible. Our MagSafe charger is glued in and center flush, so that thing is ready to go. I've also cut a hole in the back here. We're gonna have a little lid here that comes off to where the cables can go into a compartment underneath here and hide all the cables. Which brings me to the next part, which is finally starting to assemble all the big pieces that we made. So we've got a top surface. I've also made one of these. This is the box that is gonna hide all the electronics. So that's gonna go right underneath there. And then we'll have the two cabinets that we made on either side of this channel. All right, our little box is attached. Next step is attaching our cabinets to the underside here. But instead of just mounting this straight to under here, I'm gonna sandwich this board in between those two parts to get a little bit of separation and just make it look a little bit nicer. This is just an MDF board, which I've edge banded with the same oak veneer. Once everything is assembled, the MDF won't be visible. So there's really no reason to use anything more fancy than that. There-ish. Now this thing goes on the other side. I've attached this whole leg assembly with some screws from the inside. And with a little bit of luck, I'll be able to clamp all this together so that I can attach it with some screws. Oh, and I've drilled a couple of holes in both this and the box that I've already installed so that I can pull the cable through. And I've got to tell you, I am really pleased with the way this guy is turning out. Everything is attached together. I've also filled the top of the holes for the screws so that we have a nice, even and smooth top surface. It's now time for the very last step, the step that I'm talking so much about, and that is gluing on the linoleum top layer, which is this guy right here. I am really excited about this. I think it's gonna look really, really nice. So this stuff is furniture grade linoleum. It's pretty similar to the stuff you'd have on your flooring, but this stuff is especially made to have on top of work surfaces. It has this really nice and even flat matte surface finish, which is also surprisingly durable. Now, the way we're gonna glue this thing on is that we're gonna use contact adhesive, the same stuff that you would use when you're gluing on flooring. We're gonna spread some of this stuff on each of the sides, that being the underside of this and the top side of this. Let it dry for a proper amount of time and then we get one shot to stick it together. And I'm also gonna do that to the fronts of all the drawers so that they too will have that really nice and flat black surface finish. I've never actually done this before, so I hope it works. <laughs> All right, the glue is quite tacky now. It's time to try this. Not gonna lie, a little nervous. Don't really have a good plan for how to do this. Maybe like, oh, like this maybe. All right, I only get one shot. Once it sticks, it sticks. Oh, I'm gonna try and roll this thing on and try to hopefully avoid any air bubbles. God, this is nerve wracking. Oh, this stuff really sticks. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, look at this. All right, I'll just make sure that everything is nice and firmly pressed down so that the glue works properly. I'll do the same thing with all the other parts. Let the glue dry just a little bit more and then it's time to trim off all the edges.
All right, guys, you know what time it is? Yep, it is finally time to get rid of this old door that I've been using as a desk for way too long and replace it with the awesome new table that I just built. I always forget how heavy this thing is. Oh man, I sure hope this thing fits. Ha! <laughs> like a glove. Next up, drawers. Look at this thing. I am so happy with it. I'm really, really pleased with the way this is turned out. It was a ton of work, but I feel like it was worth it. So on the right side here, we've got a bunch of really nice drawers. They're both push open and soft close, which is really cool. I mean, they're still empty, but I'll fill them up eventually. Now moving on to the other drawer here. This is also a little bit of a work in progress but I've got a power strip there and I've got all my chargers plugged in. That's both for the camera batteries, microphone batteries, and whatever other batteries I wanna charge in here. Talking about charging, let's have a look at our built-in MagSafe charger. All right, so hear me out. There is a little bit of a problem with this thing and that is that it is very sensitive to where you place the phone. You need to be exactly right to get it to charge. I mean, you can use a case and you can clearly see that there is a magnetic attraction there, but because I have the big iPhone, meaning that it has this massive camera bump on the back, it doesn't really sit neither flat or anywhere close to the table. So with any other smaller phones with smaller camera bumps, I think this would work a lot better, but for now, I just need to be really careful to where I place it. And yes, I could definitely use the case for it, but it actually doesn't make a difference. It doesn't increase my chances of finding the right spot in any way. And I don't really like cases. <laughs> Anyways, enough about that somewhat functional MagSafe charger. Let's have a look at the back here. So for the stuff here that I actually still need to plug in, there's this channel. I made the lid and I've also put this furry thing on the front. And now I can very conveniently hide all the cables, power strip and adapters behind here, and it's all neatly tucked away here. And with that, this project is finished. I've still got a little bit of cleanup and a little bit of organizing to do, but I'm not gonna force you to watch that. So I'm gonna say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you see you guys in the next one. If you're not yet, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. As for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.